welcome to Baguette Baguette. I'm TK, Terry Kaufman, an American living in France for the last 22 years. And I'm Marie-Aude Merigui, born in Paris, and well, I've been living here my whole life. We wanted to make a podcast about everything we love about France. French food, French music, French culture, you name it. Enjoy the episode! Imagine, you've been living in France for a few months now, for your study abroad or your, your new job. For the first few weeks, the first few months, well, they were a bit tough as you're struggling to learn the language and make new friends. But lately, it's been, been going pretty well. In fact, you've been invited out. So off you go, first for a few drinks in a busy, loud cafe. This is followed by a noisy, impromptu dinner in an apartment with a new friend that is way too small. The apartment, not the friend. Back out for more drinks in a pretty cool, laid-back lounge where you can just barely hear each other over the music and the laughter. Oops, you missed the last metro. You're going to have to stick it out until 5.45 the next morning to catch that first train of the day. So off you go to some dark cellar club to dance the night away. So the question is, what does the soundtrack of this incredible evening sound like? And that brings us to the subject of this episode, the French touch music. So Marriott, what is the French touch? Well, Terry, the French touch, and we could also call it the French touch, uh, what we're going to talk about today is that type of music, electronic music that boomed in the late 90s. Um, that was that was coming from um, techno music, house music, and then influenced by other sounds such as jazz, funk, rock and roll. And that, that was made by only French people. Uh, maybe you remember names such as of bands such as Air, Justice, and the, maybe the most famous of it, them all, Daft Punk. Exactly. Just to be very clear, we are not a music specialist or anything like that. We just happen to be people who live in France and love it and uh, wanted to talk about this kind of music that's coming out because it's true. It's uh, it's everywhere here. I don't know if it's everywhere in the world, but it certainly feels like it's everywhere in the world because it's something that uh, that uh, had a huge success in the U.S. as well. So let's talk about that. Why is it so successful in your opinion? Simply, I don't know how else to put it. It sounds very international. Yeah. It sounds silly to say this, but this is really how it feels for me. And it is very good music to dance on, to be happy on. That, that, that sounds about right to me. For me, it, for me, it sounds a little bit different, a little different, a little bit chic uh, as well. It sounds for me, it sounds like a Paris cafe. I like seriously, every time I think of of uh, maybe Daft Punk or Air, or I think for me, the first one that I remember was like, and I arrived in France in like the two, uh, in two thousand, and it was Saint Germain, and he had this album called Tourist, and that album you just could not escape. It was everywhere. It was in every cafe and every place, and, and it was great at the time. It was fantastic. I can't listen. It's one of those albums I can't listen to anymore <laughs> because I think I've heard it so much but um it, but it just it really you kind of bob your head you can dance on it you're kind of having a drink smoking a cigarette you're laughing you're flirting and i, I think that's it i think that's the magic of it it is a, a little bit french but very very international yeah it is so let's look a little bit at the history of the french touch um for me i was thinking about jean-michel jarre who's uh somebody who i don't really know maybe you can explain him a little bit better than i could yeah um i agree well I, as you said Earlier, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a specialist um, in music in general and in electronic music in particular. Yet I was born in France in the early '80s, and I remember at that time Jean-Michel Jarre was a huge. He was the one that introduced electronic music in every home. Uh, when before it used to be something very underground, uh, frowned upon by people who loved. Um, real music, you know, <laughs> music with actual guitars and pianos, or I don't know. And Jean-Michel Jarre was a huge star, and he exported very well, too. Um, and his specialty was electronic music and a huge concerts um, where, where he would um, have, you know, he would have a lot of lights and tell a story with a game of lights and music, and it was huge. I remember huge venues. And it was in the 80s, maybe the late 80s. And then there were the youngest ones, the younger ones, sorry, uh, that introduced the French touch, such as, I don't know, but saint Clair. Um, yeah. I was thinking Laurent Garnier, uh, Saint-Germain, like I just mentioned, yeah. David Guetta, yeah, for example. Well. They were, I don't know, They, I, I would say they were influenced and allowed to, to be heard more, I would say, because there was Jean-Michel Jarre beforehand. 
Yeah. And I think obviously like the, the biggest star here would probably be Daft Punk. And we can't talk about the, the French touch without talking about them. It was like 1997, their album uh, Homework came out. They, they had that famous song Around the World, which I'm sure everybody's heard. After that was uh, Discovery, uh, One More Time, and then The Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger. So I mean, those are huge, huge albums. And I, just personally, I wanted to say a little something about, about that album because they actually made a film called Interstellar 5555, uh, which I watched with my kids. And it's um, actually drawn by a uh, famous Japanese um um, cartoonist, I guess you would say. Uh, his name is uh, Matsumoto, and he was the creator of Albator, uh, the famous uh, cartoon from the 70s or 80s. And this uh, is such a touching movie. I really, it's basically, it's just the whole album of Discovery, but with a, a music video that just that just tells a wonderful story. So I don't know if you've ever, so I don't know if our listeners have ever had the chance to watch this thing, but it is absolutely fantastic. So what about you, Marriott? What about uh, what was Daft Punk for you? Daft Punk, it was. I remember I was a teenager and they were everywhere. They, I, you said you talked about around the world. Well, this is something I, we could not escape around the world at the time it went out. Um, and it was curious. And as everybody else, I guess, I thought they were English or American, uh, but they were not. And that was par- part of the story. That was part of what was so interesting about them. Just two regular French and even young guys, just like this. So, and it was in, a, in at the age. I mean, I was like fifteen or something like this. So, um, I don't know if it means more because I was younger, but it was. It's different. It has put a mark on my memories. I would say. Um, and then they like. <laughs> I sound like a fan, like a cheesy fan, but they kind of accompanied my life um, since then because uh, there is no wedding, uh, birthday party, um, coffee in a bar, dance in my car. I haven't spent with Daft Punk, you know, yeah. since then. <laughs> so, yeah, they are kind of part of the deal, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. It makes sense. It's funny because the last album is uh, Random Access Memories was 2013 and it still feels like it's pretty fresh. It was the album, if you, if you don't know, it was the album that had uh, Farrell Williams on it. Uh, it had uh, Get Lucky, Lose Yourself to Dance. It sold like, yeah. uh, like I think in one year it sold over 3 million copies. It was like number one in the US and basically Europe. <laughs> you know, it was just a huge, huge success. You know, so obviously these guys were extremely talented. Of course, they also retired their metallic, you know, helmets in uh, 2021. Uh, and right of that, of course, another huge jump in sales. So we won't be hearing from them anymore. And they didn't actually do a ton of albums over like 20 years. I, they, they didn't do a, a massive number of albums, but they're still all very good. But OK, so we talked a little bit about Daft Punk. You mentioned two other groups. Which one do you want to attack first, Air or Justice? Well, I'm going to pick Air. Um, good choice. Very interesting because once again, it is we're talking about two young French men. Uh, making some music that sounds very much not French or as French as we thought at the time. Um, And because I remember that uh, that there was this piece they made for the movie The Virgin Suicides by Sofia Coppola, and it became very famous. It was very much in everyone's ears. And um, again, it didn't sound French at all. It seems funny to say this because what is a French sound? I don't know, because this became one of what we we could call a French sound. Yeah. And it was very, I don't know, Anglo-Saxon. That's funny that you said that because for me, it, it felt a little bit more French than other things because it's, it's quite atmospheric. It's pretty subtle. It's a lot, there's a lot of things going on. It's a, it's a lot less like dancey than I would say like Daft Punk. You can, you know, you could definitely hear that at a party. Air is, is, um, it's pretty complex in some ways I found. And it's a lot less, you know, tap your feet and a lot more like being in a, an environment and an atmosphere and kind of going into another realm, you know, I found about air. I, I personally really enjoyed it. I think my yeah. favorite album was a uh, love to, but I was listening to um, Talkie Walkie and Moon Safari recently, and I was like, oh, yeah, it was, as I was preparing to get ready for this this podcast. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, I really love these albums. I listened to them for like two or three years. <laughs> you know? So Air yeah. is definitely definitely worth the, retour, the detour. Yeah. The last one was is Justice, and they're very well known for that song called The Dance. Um, it's not my favorite album of theirs. I liked Women a lot better, and it's a great driving CD if you like kind of like Radiohead or something like that. I Sometimes I throw Radiohead and then Justice on for, for driving long distances, and then a little bit of Air. That's all pretty good that's a pretty good mix actually yeah i agree with you uh it is all of this and um you just said something that's very interesting you said air sounded to you more french 
Um, yet everyone still thought they weren't when they first came out. Uh, so about all of those, what the French touch in general, what to you makes it so French? That's a, that's a good question. Um, I think it's because it's kind of easy, cool, uh, where they make it look and sound really simple and simple and easy. But in fact, it doesn't, you know, so it doesn't seem complicated, but in fact, it works really, really well. And it is pretty complicated. And I think there's a lot of influences of different types of music. I think you named like, I don't know, four or five different styles of music in the beginning. So yeah, disco and funk and jazz and, and rock and, and, uh, you know, a bit of hip hop. And so this is kind of eclectic mix of all these different things. And, and maybe with like, uh, you know, France being, you know, not US and not English with a kind of an outside ear kind of, you know, got all of these different elements together. And, and, and this is what they came out with. And I also think it's interesting because it's not like it's trying too hard. It's not trying to be pop. It's not trying to be famous. It's not trying to make you love it. It's very kind of nonchalant. You're either going to like it or you're not. And they don't care too much. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but that seems very French to me too. What about you? Um, yeah, I like what you just said. I think it is, to, to me, it sounds very true. Also, I think that um, what makes it so French is also because um, I know that there is and there, there has been for more than 30 years a very active and rich French techno music scene, electronic music scene. Um, and as I said before, it was less famous. It was only people that knew about it, was were interested in this type of music, knew about it. And the French touch, um, they made it become something that could enter any kind of home um, in an old car, as we said. Yeah. And, and because there is a, some kind of a tradition of electro mu music in France as well. True. And there was something else I was wanting to talk about in kind of the beginning because it's it's true that it was also at the time we started getting like iMacs and 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 MacBooks and 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 basically people started having home studios in like the late '90s, you know, early early 2000s, and and it could be suddenly at home with like two dudes who can play some instruments, you could just basically do everything at, between two guys at home, you know, which is you know in a small studio in whatever Versailles or some some place just outside of Paris, you know, and I think that's that's really helped the technology really helped the growth of this music as well. Yeah, and yeah, maybe this is also what adds to the legend, I would say, is that there is a sense that, as you said, two, two young men um, crafting some music in with their computers, it sounds like very, like, they were just having fun, and boom, they made millions of yeah. sales, you know? So it is very interesting of a story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and coming back to the idea of not searching for success, but searching for new kind of a new feeling as well. I think that was part of it. Um, so we, you, you asked me about why it, what makes it so French. I'll ask you. Normally, we about the U.S. Normally, we say would this work in the U.S. And obviously, it did. You know, so uh, my question to you is, why do you think this this French touch works so well in the U.S.? Well, first of all, I would say that each time those groups would put lyrics into their music, it was in English. And it is a huge key to enter the, any English-speaking market, so the U.S. as well. Um, and also, there is something in the sound those people uh, create that sounds, I don't know how to put it, I would say it sounds universal, universally uh, appealing, I would say. Yeah, you're right. Oh, that was the that was the thing. It's basically French, different French bands. It's pretty varied. The difference between Air, Daft Punk, and Justice. It's there is a pretty big difference, I would find. And you could also say there's kind of a, a, a French touch pop rock sound as well. If we wanted to include like Phoenix, who actually won the Grammy in 2010 for best alternative album, or a group I like a lot uh, called Pony 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 Run Run. Um, and there's uh, tons of French DJs as well. David Guetta, you talked about Martin Selvig. Yeah, but there's Bob Sinclair. There's a, a pretty huge French DJs. But I think you, you wanted to talk a little bit about um, the number of albums that were sold. Just for three of them, Air, Justice, and Daft Punk, I looked on the platform on which I listen to my music, and it's Spotify. Um, for example, Air gathers 2 million auditors each month, Justice, 2.5 million, and Daft Punk, of course, is like rockets of those, it's 16 million, even yeah. though uh, they have parted ways. Um, in 2021 so it's we're talking and it's just on one platform so let's imagine in sales of vinyls cds and other platforms it is 
huge, yeah, really huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not even including all the different movies that they've been in as well. <laughs> yeah. So is it possible? So we're, we've said, okay, well, it's it's great. We love it. And, and, and it's actually been everywhere. You know, we can't kind of escape it being in France for the last 20 years, that's for sure. Um, is it possible for people not to like the French touch, in your opinion? Yes, it is. Yet, I think it is very easy to like at least some of it. If I just take my example, I mean, it, when it came out, I was a teenager and I was a fan of Joan Baez and Bob Dylan. So I was not <laughs> the type of people that would be into that type of music. And um, not immediately, because, the, for example, I, I hated it. The first one, Daft Punk, Around the World, I hated it. It was repetitive. Um, uh, can we say it in English? Repetitive? Repetitive, yeah, sure. Right. It was repetitive. And I thought it was boring. And then over the years, I appreciated it more and more. Um, and it is a music that I can listen everywhere. And I have my faves also. So we can hate it, but we can also very easily like it. I, I agree with you. Some people may not like it. They may find it boring or that it's all the same um, and that it's missing something. What's interesting is that, for example, since um, since the French Touch, uh, it seems like every video on YouTube sounds a little bit French touchy, you know, where they just kind of have this background music that that, that that goes on. It's like, oh, that that seems, you know, that's, that seems familiar right, right now. And like, um, but for me, in fact, I was thinking about it. And I was like, well, what, what, what color would this music be? And for me, it's like a pastel, you know, it's like a pink and blue, soft blue. And you either like it or you don't. And there's sometimes you don't. There's Sometimes you do. I'm, I'm kind of I quite like you where I go into phases. But I mean, I guess um, one thing we didn't say is your favorite part about this thing. And and maybe for me, uh, I'll start with that. And I think the favorite part of this music is that you, it really puts you like any type of music. It puts you in a place and a time. And for me, my place and time is um, being young and just I was 25 year old and I arrived in Paris and I was from North Carolina and I was living in Paris and it was really am just amazing, you know, and it's not like it's also not DJ party music, but it's kind of passepartout in, as we say in French, it's just it's for anything. It's good for working uh it's good for running it's good for cooking it's good for eating it's good for having a drink with your friends it's it's good it's great music for for any creative time so what about for you what's your favorite part of this thing well my favorite part of it is that um with most songs from artists from the french touch um i noticed that they stick into my mind like, you know, when you listen to something or even a little bit of the song and then for the whole day, the whole night and the whole week, maybe you have the song in your head and you keep mm, singing it because it's stuck with you. Uh, and I like it very much because because it is, you know, it is a happy feeling to have a song in your head first. And also because to me, it is the sign of good crafted, well crafted music to be able to remember that quickly uh, a melody and words. Mm. Um, and to feel happy singing it again and over and over again. Yeah. And I, I think you said it when uh, it, is, it is generally pretty happy music as well. Yeah. If and when people like to listen to the French Touch, what else would you advise them to listen to? I'm going to start with Vitalik, who is a French DJ um, from Dijon. Uh, there's also another group at the moment called Polo and Paul, which is very good. Um, L'Impéatrice. Um, and maybe uh, there's a DJ called DJ Snake that's very good. Uh, Turn down for what? I think a lot of people are going to know. And just in general, follow um, the production company Ed Banger Records, because a lot of bands of, uh, of I would say, French touch type bands have come out of uh, Ed Banger Records. What about you? Uh, well, I always think that I don't know that much in uh, the type of lounge electronic sound. Uh, so I wouldn't be the best advisor, but I do know that I like very much to listen to Christine and the Queens and which have the same qualities I just, I just named before. It is something that sticks to your mind and that is very pleasant to, you know, sing along and Christine and the Queens, for sure. Okay, good choice. I'm, I'm going to go with one more. I'm going to add Nouvelle Vague, uh, which is like kind of a French cover band, if we could say that. They, they innovative remakes of, of uh, things like Depeche Mode, Blondie, and, and Billy Idol. It's a French singer singing in English with a kind of a bossa nova, jazzy, cool sound. And that's something you could definitely hear in a swanky lounge, you know, somewhere in Paris. I was kind of surprised when I was researching this uh, this podcast because I didn't realize how much I already listened to this type of music and how much I really like it. And uh, what was really cool is that um, I've now I've discovered a ton of new artists that I'm going to be following and, and checking out. So I've had a really good time researching this and a good time talking about this with you, Mariette. À très bientôt. Yeah, me too. Well, talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please follow us on Instagram and let us know what you love about France. 
Maybe it'll be our next episode. Allez, until next time, à bientôt. À la prochaine.